What is sex for? Some believe it isn't for anything. It's up to the individual to decide. One might decide it's for pleasure. Another, something you do to escape boredom. Some say sex is nothing more than a handshake or hug. But is that true? If the purpose of sex was just for pleasure, why is it associated with such heartache? For example, after a hookup, a guy never calls a girl, and this hurts her. Why? A hug doesn't cause this hurt. Or a couple is exclusively dating, then the guy finds out she was sleeping with someone else. He feels betrayed. Why? If sex is nothing more than a high five handshake or hug, it simply shouldn't matter. I think we intuitively know that there's something special about sex, but oftentimes we don't stop to ask the question, what is the purpose of sexual intimacy? Catholic author Frank Sheeds said, the typical modern man practically never thinks about sex. He dreams of it, of course, by day and by night. He craves for it, he pictures it, he is stimulated or depressed by it, he drools over it. Drooling is not thinking. Picturing is not thinking. Craving is not thinking. Dreaming is not thinking. Thinking about sex means striving to see sex in the innermost reality and in the function it is meant to serve. When we think about the organs of the body, we see that they were ordered towards something. They have a purpose. For example, the ear. Our ears are ordered towards something. They're ordered towards taking in sound to hear. Our eyes are ordered into taking in light so that we can see. Our lungs are ordered towards breathing to take in air. So we wouldn't say the ear's purpose is whatever I decided it's for, or we wouldn't say the purpose of the lungs is for whatever inclination I feel that the lungs are for. No, we, we would look at it logically and say, well, they're ordered towards something. Our sexual organs are the only ones that are incomplete on their own. A woman's body on its own does not make sense. A man's body on its own does not make sense. The only way to understand a woman's physiology is to see it in light of man's physiology. And the only way to understand a man's body is to see it in light of a woman's body. Then we arrive at a complete picture of a man and woman, and then we can understand the purpose of sex. What is sex for? Number one, for bonding. There is a unitive aspect in the male and female body. The two become one flesh. And this is more than just a physical, casual union. Sexual intimacy is a total free gift of self to the other person that communicates, I am yours and you are mine. And number two, what is sex for? Well, babies, this is a lifelong consequence of sexual intimacy. This is what sexual intimacy is ordered to. Nobody has ever gotten pregnant and thought, I wonder how that happened. Sex is ordered not towards a temporary consequence, but a permanent one, a baby. It follows then that if babies are a permanent, lifelong consequence of sexual intimacy, then sexual intimacy is best experienced in a permanent, lifelong, committed relationship, which is marriage. And if with our bodies through sexual intimacy, we're expressing, I am totally yours, this should be consistent with our state of life. And the only state of life that this would be consistent with would be marriage, where we commit ourselves to be faithfully and totally the other person's till death be part. So what is sex for? For babies and for bonding with the other person in the context of marriage. The church teaches by safeguarding both these essential aspects, the unitive and the procreative, the conjugal act preserves in its fullness the sense of true mutual love. But what happens if you take sexual intimacy and you use it for something against its purpose, outside of its purpose? Well, what if you take anything and use it against its purpose in contradiction to its design? Oftentimes, you get brokenness and hurt. For example, let's say you use the eyes for something they weren't designed for, like you, to take in food. Well, you damage the eyes. And what happens if you take the lungs and you use the lungs for something they weren't designed for, like to take in food? Well, then you could choke or worse die. And what happens if you take sexual intimacy and you use it for something that it wasn't purposeful, wasn't designed for? Well, then you get a lot of brokenness and pain. How? 
many different ways. You end up with broken marriages through infidelity. Sexual intimacy is meant for spouses, not neighbors. As a result, you end up with heartache, betrayal of trust, destroyed relationships. You end up with fatherless children. Casual sex offers no commitment beyond that moment. You end up with having unwanted children, couples wanting the pleasure of sex without the responsibility of raising a child, which of course leads to contraception, which is a contradiction to the nature of sex. Contraception, remember, has a failure rate. This leads to then abortion. Contraception failed to prevent a life, then let's destroy the life. More pain. You get sexual confusion. If sex is not for babies and for bonds, then there's no reason it can't be with anything or with anyone sexually transmitted infections. This would not exist if people were faithful to the purpose of sex. Proliferation of porn, which sees people as parts, not persons. Sexual intimacy outside of its purpose reduces a person to an object of lust through a one night stand. Basically, you end up with a lot of hurt and pain. Why? Because sexual intimacy was designed between man and woman for babies and bonds and taking it outside of that, what do you get? Broken families. And as the family goes, so goes the society. Yes, so what happens in the bedroom affects everyone. That is why we should be concerned about using our sexuality in communion with its design. My name is Ken Yuzinski from CatholicSpeaker.com. Thank you for watching.